Okay, so now I'm getting to the writing. And when I get to the writing, I have a pretty complex question I have to answer. It says, describe how the word choice in this text influences the tone of the text. Use at least three details from the text. For each detail, explain why it influences the tone. And then, and how that tone relates to the theme of the text. Whoa. There's quite a bit in here. And what I'm going to do to give this example is color code my answer. And I would suggest you guys do the same. So describe how the word choice in the text influences the tone of the text. So I have kind of a generic question I need to answer. I'm going to make that red. And usually when you're answering any sort of question or prompt, I tend to, unless I have a great reason otherwise, go in order with the question as in terms of when I write. So if I have this red part right here, I'm going to start by answering that red part in my writing and then kind of work my way through. Use at least three details from the text. That means text evidence. So I'm going to make that part purple. And for each detail, explain why it influences the tone. Now this is a big difference for text evidence in this assignment, is that when you put text evidence in your writing, you need to explain why that text evidence is in your writing in your own words. You, need, you can't just chuck text evidence in your writing from here on out. You have to explain why it's there. And actually, overall, that makes your life easier, because a lot of times in your head, you pick some text evidence, and it makes sense to you. But to your reader, they don't know what you're thinking. And so for me, a lot, sometimes, like in previous assignments, you would send me an assignment in, and I looked at your text evidence, and I'm like, I don't, I don't understand why did you put that there. It doesn't, that doesn't relate to the ideas at all. But to you, it totally did. Well, now this is your chance, and from here on out, your obligation is to explain why you put the text evidence you did in your text. So I'm going to make this one green. And then I also need to explain how that tone relates to the theme of the text. And there's kind of two parts to this, too. I have to identify the theme of the text, which let's say I'll make that blue. And then I have to explain how the tone relates to the theme of the text. And I'll make that one, let's say, orange. Okay, this is a nasty question. I'm not going to lie. You can do this, but it's going to be a challenging piece of writing. The key is to identify components of the question that you're being asked to answer and then just knock them out one at a time. So here's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to start by writing in red. Describe how the word choice in this text influences the tone of the text. I'm going to construct a claim. I am going to say word choice in, in this text is called Royal March creates a tone of Pride, uncertainty, and what kind of things? I'm just going to stick with uncertainty and pride of both uncertainty and pride. This text. And then I need to go into explaining why. You at least three details from the text. So I'm going to switch to purple real quick to find a detail. To create a tone of pride, when the narrator describes how, what was that part about her dad's shoes? Her father's shoes, father laced his shoes with ferocious zeal how their uh, so I'm going to chop out because my doesn't sound good I'm going to edit that out and go dot space dot space dot space you can always cut parts out of a quotation by just doing dot space dot space dot space just don't do it so much it changes the meaning of the quotation my father laced his shoes with ferocious zeal I'm going to make that purple too how their father laces shoes with ferocious zeal before starting to march. The word, and then this is where I'm going to get to my description, 
of why it influences the tone, specifically explaining my thoughts. The word zeal means to be proud, uh, passionate about a cause, and to lace your shoes with zeal shows that you must be really passionate. Okay, I'm going to switch back to purple. Or maybe I'll say passion and take a lot of pride in your cause. Okay, now I'm going to switch back to purple and find more evidence. Uncertainty and pride. However, there is also uncertainty created by the word choice. The narrator describes a dust encapsulated the floating figures within my mind. That's a pretty cool line. Narrator describes how how um, dust encapsulated the floating figures within my mind. I was drawn into reveries of freedom. And just to save a little time here for your viewing, I'm going to just finish by, I'm going to skip. And I would need to have one, so I need to have an explanation. And I'll add this. I'll make an example and I'll post it on the final assignments. Um, and then one more quotation. So I will totally have this finished up, but I'm not going to sit here and make you watch me. This is already videos going on pretty long here. And then I need to explain it. And then I need to answer this last question, how that tone relates to the theme of the text. So in blue, I'm going to write out the theme of the text. And I think this text overall is saying there's glory in dying for your cause, or there's glory in sacrificing for your cause. So. The theme of the text is that there is glory in sacrificing yourself for a cause you believe in. And then, how does the tone relate to that? I'm going to say, I'm going to go back and put it here earlier. I'm going to say, the tone of the text being of pride and uncertainty adds to the theme of the text. That there's glory in sacrificing yourself for a cause you believe in, even if you aren't certain you will win. All right, I'm going to add this um, to as an example for every assignment you do here, and I'll have it finished off for you.